Hello everybody, it's Kara from Wild Book Garden, and today I am very excited to do the Introduce Your Booktube Friend tag. This tag was created by Christy Luis from Dostoevsky in Space, as well as Victoria from A Musical Bookworm. I will link them down below, as well as their videos. Um, and I'm going to be doing this tag with my wonderful friend Mariana from Mariana Moss Books, who of course I will also link below. Um, and the way this tag works, it's really fun. It's like you and a booktube friend are kind of interviewing each other. So you have these questions that you're going to ask them um, and they answer and that's the one that you post on your channel and then they do the same with you. So it's like a really fun thing to kind of introduce one of your booktube friends to the people who follow you. And I thought this sounded like a ton of fun. So when Mariana mentioned that we could do it, I was like, yes, absolutely. And I realized after we recorded the like Zoom call that we did where we did the two interviews, um, <laughs> I realized that I, I got so caught up in introducing Mariana as like, oh, how we like met each other online and everything that I didn't actually introduce her channel at all so I'm gonna do that really quick before I pass you over to the actual interview and the video questions and everything um, so Mariana as I said her channel is Mariana Mas books um, and she reads a huge variety of things which is something I also do so I appreciate that I think that's very cool um, I would say the things that she reads the most of are fantasy, uh, like specifically adult fantasy. She reads a lot of romance, um, she reads a lot of nonfiction of various different kinds. Um, she reads a lot of like um, like historical kind of nonfiction. Like right now she's reading a lot of Mexican history um, as part of a few projects that she's focused on, um, like his Historathon. I think, or maybe it's called something a little different, which is not the historical fiction readathon. This is like a year-long reading project for reading historical nonfiction, and she's one of the hosts for that. And she also reads classics, as in like very, very old classics. Like she, um, she's read like Beowulf, and she talks about that. But she recently read uh, the poem of My Seed. So she reads a lot of different things, um, primarily middle grade and adult books. Like those are the two age categories that she reads from the most. Um, and she also does a lot of like she does like poetry videos um, for Poetry Thursday. So she reads poetry as well. Um, she also includes some other interests she has like if you're interested in tarot tube i know that uh, mariana does some content on that as well she's a wonderful person and a wonderful reviewer um i am so in awe of the way that she can get me like excited about like i don't want to say like excited about classics as if it's hard to be excited about them because like it's not like there's a lot of classics that i really love but i think it's so cool that mariana can get me just as like fired up about like an adult fantasy that she read and loved recently um or like when we read the same like fantasy romance and you know we both like love it and we're gushing about it like that is the same energy that she brings to like talking about the poem of my seed which i hadn't really i didn't know much about at all um i don't know if i even recognized the name and now i'm like so excited to read it um this like epic poem from um, I think Spain and I also really love the way that her like reviews and wrap-ups and like anytime she's like talking about books that she's read she does such a good job of like combining like emotional impact and kind of analyzing what it is about the book that like works and doesn't work for her um because I, I like that's how I tend to read and review books and I just think it's very cool to see that in other people as well I think her review style is great um yeah she's just like incredibly talented and a lovely human being I also want to mention that I don't think I have captioned a like interview type video before so I'm not sure if I'll be able to get the captions up in time for when we plan to post these if that is the case I will be doing the captions um soon afterwards so if you have to wait for that that is obviously totally fine I just wanted to mention um if there's a delay in the captions which there usually isn't for my content I just wanted to mention that that's why um so anyway I hope you enjoy the interview and that you enjoy uh hearing a little bit more about Mariana and like her reading tastes and please check out her channel so hello um welcome Mariana uh the first question is more for me it is to introduce a booktube buddy on your channel um so this is Mariana her channel is Mariana Mas Books I do have it linked um and yeah I, I like what you did with when you were asking me so I, but I feel like that's kind of the same story because obviously it was how we got, got to be friends um but, but maybe not everyone we watch two videos so well they should but yeah yeah I mean I agree. <laughs> yeah um yeah so I I remember that we started out having like these really great like exchanges and comments and everything and then as you said in your video we bonded over being <laughs> Catholic leftists which like it was this long comment thread and then finally we're like we should take this to Twitter and so like we just we did that and we ended up uh buddy reading some things together and um like you ended up starting a channel which was great so it just I feel like my answer is pretty much the same as yours um but I feel like we've it's been like very exciting to see like the different stages in our friendship like when we progressed to the buddy read stage and then we progressed to the voxer stage like it just yeah, it's yeah. been really great getting to talk to you in all these different platforms 
Um, and definitely I'm going to, you're going to be a guest on my Not A Genre book club at some point if you're interested. Yeah, totally. Okay, so the first question that you are going to be answering, what genres do you like to read? So before I answer that, just real quick, I have to say, because I will say it in my intro because I forgot who I'll the interview, but you are the one who convinced me to open my channel. So thank you for that, <laughs> because I've been having a lot of fun since I'm here. Yeah, um, I'm so okay. glad you did, because I obviously love your channel too. So it just makes me really happy to think about that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so what kinds of genres do I like to read? So <clears throat> I would say my favorite genres would be fantasy and romance. And when I say fantasy, it can extend to like speculative fiction. So not necessarily like fantasy, fantasy, but like if a literary fiction has speculative elements or a historical fiction has speculative elements. Uh, but my two favorite would be fantasy and romance. And then I also like nonfiction, but I struggle to call that a genre because mm -hmm. um, it's kind of what you were saying about the age ranges not being genres and people saying, oh, I read middle grade is my favorite genre. And you're like, that's not enough because there's so <laughs> much in nonfiction. So for nonfiction, I would say I love history. I love memoirs. And then I love nonfiction about specific topics <laughs> that's the best way I can e explain I like things yeah. specific or I saw someone we say non-fiction about human endeavors and mm. I was like oh I like that definition I'm going to adopt it <laughs> yeah so yeah. those would be my favorites great yeah that's a very good point about nonfiction. like I I think about that sometimes because when I list it as a genre I'm like it's really like a collection of a lot of different mm -hmm. genres mm -hmm. yeah, but exactly. I group them together have your preferences changed over the course of your time on booktube okay I've actually been thinking about this a lot and I kind of want to make a video about it um I think it's not that they have changed it's that I have discovered things mm -hmm. that I already liked but didn't know existed so specifically I could talk about one with romance as a genre romance as a genre is a very American genre mm -hmm. um and I here in Mexico I I mean of course you can find like once you discover things you can find if you look for them but they're not like if you go to a bookstore in the main table kind of thing like yeah. you won't go and find it and you won't um and okay this is pre i talked about this in the video pre social media if you go now you will find like the tiktok romances the wattpad romances you will find them in the main table in the bookstore but when i was growing up that didn't happen the main thing is i am a big genre reader i mm -hmm. i I'm a genre reader. I think we're both our genre readers, which is where we collide. Um, I'm not a literary fiction is not my favorite. And here it's mostly literary fiction. Again, when I was growing up, if you went to a bookstore, you wouldn't find fantasy or romance or sci-fi or that type of thing in the main area. The most genre that you would find would be historical fiction. Um, but other than that, it would be just literary fiction. Mm -hmm. So I did pick books that sounded interesting and I did like a lot of books, but they when, once I started watching booktube, I started finding those types of books that you're like oh my god i love this so much rather than oh this, this was a very good book yeah <laughs> i think that would be the main difference so i yeah. i would say i discovered romance um adult fantasy and um non-fiction as like history or like the type of like memoirs or um like this type of specific nonfiction that I mean, like you can find a nonfiction about dragons in literature or about the history of dictionaries, you know, like that type of thing. 
yeah yes. I all those types of things I discovered on booktube yeah and I know that we also I'm also remembering I was like I should have said this during our other interview but we also both read indie authors mm-hmm. um but like I know you read a good number of like romance indie authors mine tends to be fantasy but I feel like that's also something that we enjoy connecting over yeah yeah um what kinds of videos do you enjoy making uh okay so (laughs) i usually make uh i think i I love talking about books i love so i love making wrap-ups but i don't do monthly wrap-ups i love um, i'm not a party like i'm not a very social person in real life but I feel like online, I love participating in every single readathon I see and mm-hmm. body reads and read alongs and all that type of thing. So I love making TBRs for readathons and wrap ups for readathons. Um, and I love making like favorite types videos. So like the new year freak out or favorites at the end because I love talking about the books I love and um, tasks. You talked yes. about it too in in the when when in your interview. I also love and make a lot of tags, and honestly, I don't apologize for it. I love tags; I think they're fun, um, yeah. and I think people always watch tags. Like people complain, but they always watch. Right, right. Um, <laughs> I what I would love to make is vlogs, but mm. they are so much work. But I love watching them. Um, and themed vlogs. Those are my favorite. Mara at Books Like Whoa, she does a lot of themed vlogs where she will have a long-term project and she, she'll say, oh, I'm going to read like books about this type of topic. And then she just reads throughout months and then mm-hmm. she will edit it and post it. And it's like a long-term project. I would love to do that. I have so many ongoing projects like that but I never end up actually finishing them because I I yeah. just changed my mind and I am obsessed with a topic I'm like I'm doing this and then I get obsessed with something else yeah I also I've done some themed vlogs like I I actually have posted more reading vlogs than I thought I would because I never used to think that was content I would do and I really enjoy it but I also I think my problem is that once like I love like the planning and you know like figuring out what books I'm gonna do and starting the vlog and like all of that and then I get to a point where I'm like I don't feel like reading what I'm supposed to even though it's like I was the one who told me I need to read these so like that's I think one of the things that I struggle with but what is your process for gathering your thoughts on a book okay that is the most difficult question and (laughs) I think uh, I don't think I actually have an answer for this question um it's very hard for me to process my thoughts on a book when it's a book I love and I feel like if you have watched my wrap-ups I basically just gush about a book and talk about how much I love it and make faces and and don't actually and then by the end of like a 30 minute gush I'm exaggerating but still long (laughs) um I, I kind of like think, oh, okay, writing style and oh, the characters and oh, oh, actually this book is about this. Um, like I always forget when I re- I thought a book was very good, but it, it wasn't like a, oh my God, type of book. It's easier for me. And I feel like I break it down in, in writing. Okay, I feel like I choose the stand standout thing about a book and I start from there because some books what stand out are the characters others are the story I recently reviewed The Heart by uh, my Lise de Kangal a French author and in that the standout thing is the writing style so I talked a lot about the writing style and the themes so I think it depends more on what stands out for me from the book um and if it's a book i love i will do a 30 minute gush before i start actually talking yeah actual thoughts yeah 
I think too, when it's a book that you really love, there's like the added consideration of like, there are things that I love about it, but it's important for you to kind of discover them, you know, like, whereas mm -hmm. if it's a book that I hate or like, didn't like, it's like, I will give you my itemized list. Of yeah, like... yeah, what I didn't like. Because mm -hmm. you're not so worried about like, not that, not that you're not worried about spoilers, because we're still, both of us are pretty careful about that, but you're not so much worried about if I talk about this, will it ruin the experience? Uh -huh. Exactly. You know? Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, I feel you. Um, what is a bookish goal of yours? You oh. kind of talked a little bit about it, but. Yeah, yeah, but in terms of booktube, I, not necessarily booktube, more, more like my reading life. In terms of my reading life, I think I'm going to steal an answer from the original tag and I don't remember who was the one who said that she would like to read like the whole uh, list of an author, like all of the books mm -hmm. of an author. I never managed to do it. I always joke about being a Sagittarius on my channel. I'm, I'm the least Sagittarius, Sagittarius you will ever meet the least cliche because I'm not adventurous or like that type of thing but I feel like in terms of my mind I'm very Sagittarius because I get a lot of interest and I jump around from thing to thing and so it's very hard for me to commit to a single thing mm -hmm. and so even if I love an author it's very hard for me to commit to their um, work. I had the goal of reading one Guy Gabriel K book a month this year since I read The Lions of Arrasan. I have <clears throat> read his poetry collection and three chapters of another one of his books. And I'm loving it, like I'm loving it. Yeah. Because my brain can commit to a single thing. So my bookish goal at the moment is to read the entire bibliography of Guy Gabriel Kay, which I'm seeing is not realistic to say will happen one a month. But yeah. I don't want to do that. And then um, I, I guess in terms of booktube themed themed videos, not necessarily vlogs, but I do have a couple of open themed videos that I have been reading slowly for them. And my goal is to actually next year start posting videos for that. But I'm not sure it will happen, but we will hope. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. If not, I'll do a video of failed long-term <laughs> projects and talk about the books I read for that. <laughs> so either way, you get to talk about the books. I think that's exactly. a great. I think that's a great <laughs> compromise. Um, what other hobbies do you have? Okay, so my main 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 one is reading. Um, I also love crafting, and uh, and I love collage. Mm -hmm. Um, I used to love drawing and painting and art i mean i still love it but um ever since a, a brain surgery i had years ago and like i've been having more and more motor skill uh problems it's more hard than fun to mm -hmm. do manual stuff so i've been reading more and more and doing art less and less but i still love it and so I feel like collage is one of those things that is very easy to do because I usually don't use scissors. I usually tear. Mm -hmm. And so like tearing and gluing is a very easy thing to do when you have motor skills. And that actually is something I discovered through therapy because my one of my therapists had me tearing paper to... um strengthen my hand muscles mm -hmm. so I started tearing paper and I thought wait like I can actually do something with all this paper that I'm tearing and I love magazines I've always loved magazines so I started tearing magazines and of course I wanted to put things together so I started collaging so now I love collaging and I have only one but again I people online call it a hobby and I guess it could be a hobby which is tarot tarot cards tarot reading tarot but I feel like it's more like a practice that I do for specific reasons 
than just a hobby that I like reading when she pick up a book. Mm -hmm. Oh, I recently picked up or picked back up puzzling. Oh, that's so a good one. we'll see if I. The only hobby I have ever. The one time where I discovered, oh, maybe I'm actually a Sagittarius was when I saw a meme that said RIP to all the hobbies that Sagittarius has abandoned. <laughs> and that's when I thought, oh my God, I'm actually Sagittarius. So the only hobby that I have never abandoned in my life is books, books, reading. And I would say art, except, you know, art has changed. So like I have abandoned I was into pastels and then I was not. And then I was into that. And then I was... So art is constant, but changes. Mm -hmm. um, but books is the one constant <laughs> that I have never um, abandoned. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely my most consistent long-term mm -hmm. hobby as well. Um, okay, what book have both of us read and do we have different opinions about it? Okay, so in your side of the interview you talked about half a soul which we have read because we've read several and we love that one i won't talk about that one uh you mentioned the beautiful ones from sylvia moreno garcia which you loved and i didn't love as much but i feel like it was a timing thing mm -hmm. the more i think about it the more i think that in other circumstances i would have loved that book um but the one that we can talk about, so the one that uh, I think it was our first official body read was Amber and Clay by Laura Amy Schlitz. And we both love that book. And I think we body read it. I had already read it mm -hmm. and loved it. And I reread it with you. And it was very soon after I had finished it. And... um. I do want to read it again. We both loved it. It's a historical fiction middle grade set in ancient Greece with a mixture of prose and verse for yes. people who are curious. And if you like Greek gods, there is a perspective that is narrated by a Greek god. So <laughs> if that sounds interesting, please, by yes. all means. Yes, it's so good. But we both loved it and... um. It's one, I I consider it one of my favorite books. Just yeah. Curious. Yeah. And then you went on to read more Laura Image. I did, yeah. yes. Speaking of, that's one of the other authors that I wanted, that I have this idea of, oh, I want to read everything she's ever written. And I have only read two. So maybe yeah. some. <laughs> well, and also... I feel like one of the things that holds me back from doing that is like, I don't want to run out of their books. <laughs> so it's not just like, oh, I need to commit to this, yeah. but it's like, it's only in the last couple of years that I've tried to make more of an effort to like actively keep up with authors, you know, backlist. Mm -hmm. um, because it sometimes, <laughs> I know that this is your side of the interview, but um sometimes like there's an author where I talk about them I'm like oh they're one of my favorites I love them blah, blah, blah. and I realize I'm like I've read one book <laughs> I'm like I'm yeah. such a I'm such a fake fan um <laughs> so you know I want to do better um okay and now we're going to exchange book recommendations so I already recommended yeah. books to you in the other section so now you get to choose some books for me okay I thought about this a lot and I have a a big list where I, I I reduced it. After we finish this interview, we will turn the recording off and people won't get to hear all of the amazing book will books we will be talking about privately. But for the official interview, <laughs> the one the, the first one that came to mind as soon as I read it, and actually while I was reading it, I kept thinking I'm going to message Kara about this. But I saved it for this. <laughs> and it is, um, maybe you already heard me talk about it, but it's like The Curse of Chalion by Louis McMaster Bujol. Yes. And um, I'm going, okay, just real quick what it's about and then why I'm recommending it to you. So it's 
in terms of what it's about, it, it's very hard to recommend it because it's a medieval fantasy, just like a really traditional medieval fantasy set in a kingdom that's in trouble. But um, it's very special <laughs> uh, in, in several um, ways. One, I think it is super feminist in a super subtle way um they're in like an in a sneaky way where um you could take you could feel the feminism and take it into the real world very easy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i think that's amazing like instead of instead of making like a maybe make believe feminist um matriarchal queendom which i also love you take a traditional kingdom, but just just slowly adding gender equality in a way where it's neither genre is on top, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I think that's brilliant. Um, and then it has a strong religious element in world religion. It's an invented religion, um, but it's amazing there are living saints in the world and one of the characters is a saint and he's amazing and the exploration of what it means to be a saint and all that is so good but the reason why like all of that sounds like okay yes recommending it to Kara but the specific reason why I decided to recommend it to you is the characters the main character Lord there are several main characters, but like the character you follow, the, the point of view is called Lord Casariel, and he is the kindest character. And we have talked about this before, about how kind characters get a bad reputation in fiction mm -hmm. as being boring. Mm -hmm. And I honestly personally think, and I will make a bit of this, so I won't go on a rant, but I think it's more revolutionary than green dark or whatever yes um we'll talk about this when we are done with the, <laughs> the interview um so he's super kind super generous he he has had such a hard life of trauma that in the hands of a different author he would be one of those characters this a cynic set on revenge mm -hmm. but in the hands of lois mcmaster Bujol, he takes his trauma and he turns it into kindness and being generous. And the best part is that he is like a, a mentor, tutor figure to a female character who is called Isel. And she is a younger character. She is a, like the princess, let's say. And she has a best friend who is like her lady in waiting, but their relationship is their, their friends and they're kind of like accomplices when they're doing things that they're not supposed to do and being rebellious. And Isel, I just read her and thought Kara would love Isel and her friendship with her friend Beatrice. Their friendship is amazing. They are both adorable and rebellious at the same time and the relationship with Lord Casariel who is super kind is so wholesome but like in a very interesting way it's not it's not cozy fantasy but it's still wholesome yeah so that's my main one <laughs> I'm excited that has been on my radar but now I am going to prioritize that. Yeah, if you pick up the audiobook, I personally love it. I feel like audiobooks are very, um, I mean, books in general are very subjective, right? Like one people will love it, another will not. But audiobooks even more because I feel like the voice and the narration is very particular. Personally, I thought it was amazing. I started it on Kindle and I switched to the audio because he's Lord Casariel is amazing and so I, I i highly recommend the audiobook and i just want to quickly and this is more an ask have you read the goblin emperor no that's another one that i'll be oh my god Cara, you have to read the goblin 
I won't gush here because I haven't gushed about it in my channel, but I will, like, again, it's short pitch. <laughs> it's a slow-paced slice of life fantasy about being kind and building bridges. And also the audiobook. Like, I am honestly devastated that I finished it, and so I started it again. Like that. Oh that's... my gosh, <laughs> that is quite a recommendation. Yeah. yeah. So those two would be two folk, two fantasies based on kindness. I love that. So, Again, I feel like you know me very so well. Much. I love them so much. <laughs> okay, moving on because I could go all day about those two books. I love that. Thank you. Um. And then exchanging book mail. And we talked about this in the other uh, interview that because we are international friends, you live in Mexico and I live in the US, we don't exchange mail super often. Yeah. Um, but we have gotten pretty creative about like gift yeah. giving and things like that. So if you want to talk about any of that. Yeah. Okay. So um, first of all, I feel like if we lived in the same country, we would exchange book mail all the time. Yes. Um, <laughs> So maybe it's good for our bank accounts that we don't. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you have gifted me and it was super hard to manage uh, how how you could give me a book for my Kindle. And we went through a whole ordeal for you. But we finally managed to do it. And um, so the main one that I would say is that you gifted me Half a Soul by Olivia Atwater. And in... Kara's interview, which you can go see in my channel, she talked about us loving um, Have a Soul and being Olivia Water fangirls. And so I will um, mention that one as the, the main one because you gifted that to me. And now I, again, fan another one of the authors. I'm like, I'm going to read his entire list book. Um, and also, you have gifted me the essay, um, the why you should read children's books, even though you are so old and wise, something like yes. that is the title. Yes. And I haven't read it, but I kind of want to read it for short in September this year. Uh, but I just know that I'm going to love it when I do. I took so long to read Have a Soul. You gifted me and I read it like a year later but I loved it when when I finally did so I know I, I'm going to love that one too yeah I I think you will and it's very it's also very indicative of like our where our reading tastes overlap um it's so good like Catherine Rendell just she writes things where I'm like yes exactly it's like I don't yeah. I can't say it in the words that sound as good as you but this yeah. is what I've been trying to say I actually um, really want to read it, and I think my mom would love it. It's one of those where I'm like, I wish it was in Spanish. Yeah. Yeah. Translated books are, it's like a whole other layer of, like, difficulty to, like, yeah. recommending and yeah. sharing yeah. things. <laughs> um, okay. And then exchange booktube memories, which is kind of like the whole tag, but yeah, I don't know if can. you had anything else. Well, um not really here would be the good place to say you are the one who convinced me to open my channel yeah. <laughs> which I already said so yeah yeah which makes me just so happy to think about like I should that should be honestly that was one of my booktube goals like after the fact almost is like it means so much to know that like one of my friends and somebody whose content I love like started because of my channel like that's incredible to me um so thank you for that Mariana <laughs> yeah well thank you for commenting yeah um and then the last thing is choosing people to tag and we kind of talked about how probably we'll do that in an outro because this mm -hmm. is kind of a specific sort of tag yeah um yeah so I hope you guys got to know Mariana of course I will link her below please check her out uh she's wonderful <laughs> Thank you. thank you. I feel so... thank you. I feel so lucky to be friends with you. Yeah, me too. Thank you. Oh, this was so fun. I'm glad we did. 
Okay, everybody, I hoped you enjoyed getting to hear a little bit more about Mariana and the kinds of things she likes to read, her reading history, our history of being booktube friends. Um, as I said, I, link, I will link her below as well as her video where she asks me those questions, um, so be sure to check that out as well. We had a ton of fun doing this, and I think we're actually supposed to tag people. I don't know if I have any off the top of my head. Maybe I'll put a couple people in the description, but um, if not, just feel free to do this if you would like to. It's really fun to do with a booktube friend. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you soon with another video, and I hope you love the next book you read. Bye!